Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason and this is a free hypnosis session for you to listen to, to watch, but only when you can safely close your eyes. So the main thing is your safety. The main thing is that you can allow yourself some time to just let go. Because when I do these sessions, I find myself getting a bit sleepy, a bit drowsy sometimes. But the sessions aren't necessarily about falling asleep. The insomnia ones, you know, the sleep sessions, then yeah, they are. But, you know, a lot of the other sessions that I do, we may be talking about a specific subject which has nothing to do with sleep. But just in case you do find yourself getting a bit drowsy because I've got such a boring, a boring voice, then maybe, you know, you might drift off or go a bit drowsy, but it's not necessarily important for you to do such a thing because part of the process involved in what I do is I give you an opportunity to just choose a few ideas that I may present to you that you might find, you might find it useful, you may find it interesting, you may look at things slightly differently from a you know, slightly different angle. And just that slight, small, tiny change can make a big change. You ask any mechanic or electrician or um, engineer, you know, sometimes the tiniest little change turning of the of the nut can actually make the difference between an engine working and an engine doing nothing. And I guess sometimes our minds can also be a bit like that. A bit fragile. And there's nothing wrong with having a fragile brain because all of our brains are fragile. It's the most fragile part of our existence, is our brain. And it does need fine tuning sometimes. And the slightest change in your thought patterns, in how you view a situation, maybe you know, a little bit differently can have an impact which can really set off more and more changes and it grows, it just becomes bigger and bigger because this affects that, affects this, then that affects that, and affects this and parts of your life get affected and you don't even realise it. You haven't even realised what's going on now. Maybe the changes that are occurring naturally within your mind. Because the way I see it is when you sit down to listen to me, when you decide to watch my videos and look at my funny beard, and you know, you just you give yourself to me. You, in a sense of, you put trust in what we're doing. You're interested in what I'm going to say. I may, I may sound like I'm just talking um, just a bunch of words sometimes. It may seem quite vague sometimes. And part of the reason for that is because I'm talking to, although I'm talking to you, I have to also remember that there's other people listening as well. Okay? So they may need... Uh, a certain vagueness 
to adapt my words so that it fits into your view of the world, your setup, the way your mind is continuously changing, you know, so as we said. So that's what fascinates me. Probably one of the things that fascinate me the most out of all of the uh, hypnosis sessions and all of the talking sessions that I do, when I'm not saying to you, close your eyes, um, count down from 10 to one, uh, to relax each individual part of your body because your body starts to relax anyway. And the more you listen to me, the more you feel more relaxed, the quicker you feel more relaxed. And also, I don't have to mention the word relax because that's already ingrained in your mind. And the more you watch my videos, the more you listen to my voice, the more you hear the words, there'll be like a button that switches on and a process that starts and continues whereby you automatically go into a sense of comfort, calmness, relaxation and safety because you know that you're safe with me you know that you're safe now to just relax and there's nothing that I'm saying to you that you can never hear again because you can rewind this and you can listen so it's not like we're in a room on our own I'm saying something to you and at the end of it you're thinking I wonder what he said. What did he say? And you can never have that confusion because this is here always for you to play back and re-listen. It doesn't mean that I'm necessarily saying anything amazing or you know life-changing. It doesn't mean that those words that I'm saying that may not seem life-changing don't help contribute to you changing your life anyway because your life is going to change whether you listen to me or not your life will change because your life is continually changing all the time always you've got no choice about that we've got choices about so many different things but you cannot choose not to change because you will change your life will change all feelings change there's no choice about that there's no nothing you can do to avoid that what you can do is steer yourself so if you think about those changes let's say you're um, for argument's sake, obviously, if you don't like the sea or water, just ignore what I'm about to say next. But if you are in a boat and all you've got is a sail and you've got wind coming from all different angles, and you never know when the next wind's going to come. But you do know that a wind is going to come. So it's a case of waiting. And when the wind does come, that's when you decide what to do next and life in a sense for me that's what life is it's a continually you know new winds coming in all the time constantly and then making that decision what to do with that wind what way do you direct the sail which direction do you want to go what you could do is try to uh, you know you could put the sail down Get your rows out and start rowing against the wind. See where that gets you. I don't think you need me to tell you where that's going to get you. Um, it's going to get you very sweaty. That's where it's going to get you. It's going to get you nowhere.
So with that analogy, what situations are you rowing against the wind in your life? What situations could you really do better by just either sitting there, putting the rows down, the oars down? Maybe putting the sail up and just going with the wind. Going in a direction that you want to go, but using the wind's power to allow you to go in that direction. So I'm wondering, is there a situation that you can think about in your mind right now where you've been rowing against the wind instead of going with the wind, instead of using the wind's power in order to help you, in order to guide you to where you want to be, to a safe place, to a happy place. When you think about that time, think about that situation where you've been rowing against the wind, achieving nothing but pain and suffering. What could you do different? What could you have done differently? And what will you do differently in the future? What will happen next time that wind comes and your automatic response is to row against it? What will happen if you do something different? Because ultimately, if what you're doing isn't working, you've got two choices. You continue doing it or you do something different. Why would you continue doing something that causes harm and suffering to yourself? What's the point in that? It's like if you get stung by stinging nettles, you don't rub more stinging nettles into your skin to help to get rid of the stinging sensation, because that would be silly. What can you do differently? And I'm asking this question because I don't know what the answer is for you. What's the first thing that comes into your mind? As you imagine the next time that you have that wind and your first you know, initial response is to get back into that old pattern of behavior that was no good or completely useless to you. All the other times in the past, if you used it, got you nowhere, changing it to something else instantly, change it to the thing that you think, oh, maybe I'll do something different, do something different, and imagine yourself doing that different thing, what is it that you're going to do different, and you can forget about the the boat and the sailing and the wind, because we're talking about a specific thing. For example, someone in your life is, says something that you find affects you, that you know you have a reaction to that person, and maybe you say something to them and you get into an argument, as an example. So instead of doing that, which doesn't lead to anywhere good, 
doesn't help anybody or yourself. It just leads to more pain and suffering. What else could you do in that situation? What could you do that's new? Maybe it's not new, maybe it's something you have done before and it worked, but for some reason you just haven't done it again. Which is, you know, that's possible. So maybe there's something that you know works, but for some reason you've just forgotten to do it. But now that you've been reminded of that thing that you can do that is useful, that actually makes a difference, that actually makes a change in your life and reduces anxiety, reduces suffering and pain, leads you to a place where you want to be with more happiness, with more safety, with more comfort, with more control, with more confidence within yourself that you can make these changes, that in those situations you can make that decision instantly. Because for years and years and years, You've been making that decision instantly without thinking about it. But it may have been the wrong decision. It may have been the wrong action. And by wrong, I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying wrong in the sense of it's been causing you pain and suffering. And if you do something that causes you pain and suffering, I can't think of a better word than wrong. But it's definitely not right. You know, it's definitely not a right thing to do. If it causes you pain and suffering, then you need to look at it. You need to look at it, really, really look at it. And step back and say, hey, no. No more. No more. This is not acceptable in any way. Because you, you're worth more than that. You deserve more than that. So this is something that will happen automatically from now on. The idea, the suggestion is implanted in your mind. And you can test it. You can test it in your imagination. So I'd like you to just imagine a situation in the next day or so, or maybe whatever it is, doesn't matter what the situation is, something where your automatic behavior used to kick in, which used to lead to more pain and more suffering at the time. It's basically useless, useless uh, behavior. It was of no use to you. I mean, there's a reason why we flush the toilet after going to the toilet. Because the stuff that comes out of our bums is of no use. It needs to be flushed away. That's the same with useless info, you know. Get rid of that behavior. It's, it's, does it help? If it doesn't help, flush it away. It's not needed. So think about that time, maybe in the next day or next few hours even, where you'll be faced with a situation where you really, really could do with a change in behavior, your behavior, a change in your instant reaction. And imagine that. You can close your eyes if you choose. Imagine that situation, but instead of the old pattern kicking in, something different happens. It's as if that old pattern's gone. It's, it's just not there anymore. It's been erased. It's been destroyed, it's gone, bang, gone. 
But instead of that, you have a choice. It allows you a gap, it allows you some space. And you have a choice. And the new behavior, you can test it. Do something different. And just notice how that feels. Really notice how good that feels. Knowing that you really do have more control over feeling great and getting rid of those behaviors that were only causing you suffering in the past and moving forward with new behaviors that can give you more pleasure, more comfort, more happiness, more safety. And you can feel more confident within yourself, knowing that you're the one that made these changes occur. You're the one that did the work. And I'm gonna leave you with that. Let me know how you get on. And I'm going to go. So just remember to be kind to yourself. Thank you. Bye.